Right, in this video, I'm actually going to be recording one half of a tutorial rather than a whole thing just because of the scope of this one. I'm going to be compositing a lot of images together. Uh, you can see the example here that I have in Photoshop, and here's my, my waiting images to be used. And it's going to be taking primarily these six that you see here, one of a ship, uh, ocean spray, sunset, some fog, and most importantly, the figure and the background. And this is what we're going to be merging them together into, uh, this combination of imagery. Uh, so here's my images. I'm just going to look at this really quickly. Just to point out some of the key elements, you'll notice with the images on the side, these are mostly, they're very blue. And then my image here is very strongly sepia. So it's got a really warm tone to it. And one of the reasons I did that is, in, for one thing, the look. I wanted that sort of ethereal fantasy look that comes along with that uh, particular coloration. And then also, it was just a good way to bind these images together. One of the most important things when you're compositing is light. So when you have all these different elements, I'll a lot of times desaturate them individually, and then overall color them so that they mesh together a little bit better. Uh, so I'm going to start with opening my canvas. And this could be the most uh, scatterbrained of all tutorials that I do simply because of the scope of this one. I'm going to do width and height, 3000 pixels. Uh, pixels per inch is actually relatively unimportant, but I'm still going to set it to 300 out of some kind of habit. Uh, so the first one we're starting with here in desktop is now see, this is why you have to organize things, otherwise you end up with a mess. Here it is, the C. I'll find an easier way to do that later. So I'm going to take the C and open it up here. And I'm going to expand it to the full height, which I didn't get it quite all the way up there. The full height of my canvas. There we go. And then just kind of move it around to see what looks best. I like the area with the most light, about right here. Also looking, seeing the direction of my light, that's going to help me as I move forward. With everything I bring in, I'm going to rasterize that by control clicking or right clicking on the name of the layer and clicking rasterize layer. Next up, I'm just going to do this the easy way so I don't have to hunt them. I'm going to bring in this sunset image. And this one is going to have to be expanded some in order to cover the full size. Basically, I just wasn't completely happy with the sky, so I wanted to put something in here that could go over the top and give a little bit more drama to the image. Now, one thing I do want to make sure happens is that the horizons line up on these two. So I have the horizon here, I have the horizon here. I want those to line up. That is extremely important. Otherwise, the sky just doesn't look natural. But we can trick the eye pretty well if the horizons do line up. So confirm that placement. I'm then going to take a soft brush after rasterizing this and just kind of softly edge away the bottom so that these two blend together. There's an obvious color discrepancy, but we can deal with that as we go forward. Now just for reference in the future, because I've done this tutorial several times, uh, I know that I'm going to want to actually flip it. I want my light coming from the left rather than from the right over here. So uh, in order to keep it consistent, you can see how the light is coming down from this direction. So these waves down here are consistent. I'm just going to image, image rotation, flip canvas horizontal to flip the entire thing. All right, so I'm going to leave this for the time being after I bump that back up on opacity. My two images here, and instead I'm going to take my figure layer, figure photo, and I'm going to open it in Photoshop. I want this one in its own canvas so I can work separately because this is my figure that's going to go, as we see in the sample down here in the corner, uh, this is a really great one because I found it uh, on a website somewhere. Again, I just put this together for example purposes. So I found it on a website. It was high resolution. It had this great rock. It's actually a mountain. Uh, but when I take it off and remove this valley background, it goes very well. It's kind of a rock on the edge of a shore. Works just fine. 
So we're going to do something along that those lines with it. And one of the most important things to do is cut out the sky. Cut out the background. In this case, since I want the rock as well, it actually simplifies it a little bit. So I'm going to take my polygonal lasso tool, and starting over on the side, I'm going to make quick work of this. I'm not going to put too much effort into it for the sake of the tutorial, but before I make the second part of the tutorial, I'll probably go in and clean it up some, get rid of some of the extra that I'm inevitably going to leave behind during this process. Right now I'm actually using my Wacom tablet to help with this. I find that any type of little precision things like this, a Wacom tablet can be extremely useful. Now there's a variety of different selection methods you can use. Uh, it's just when it comes down to it, I'm probably going to use a method that is more manual because it gives me control rather than trying to use an automated process and consistently being frustrated by the fact that it doesn't quite stack up. Especially on this case where we have dark figure and dark background over these trees. As we get up here towards the sky, it's a lot better. Much better. But still, there's no harm in doing it the manual way. Especially with the polygonal lasso, which moves consistently more quickly. Now here around the hair, I'm going to give that a wide berth. I'm just not going to worry about getting detail there. I will do that later. Right now it's just about moving the figure and moving the rock. Another thing to make mention of is when I'm zoomed in working with the polygonal lasso tool like this, I can hold the space bar and then drag with my mouse or Wacom, whatever I'm using, in order to navigate without having to zoom out or stop creating my selection. Sometimes it's really not wise to do this all in one stretch because if I mess up, if I accidentally double click, it's going to try and make me start over. But I feel pretty confident that's not going to happen. Let's hope it doesn't mess up on me. What you could do is just make a selection, hold shift, and keep adding to it using the polygonal lasso tool. And that works very effectively. I just like to live on the dangerous side a little bit. Alright, now that I've come around that side, I'm going to zoom out and come back to my original point. And there you have it, a nice selection. Uh, one thing I will do though is to remove some of this area here. I'm going to hold Alt, which creates a little minus emblem around the lasso tool. And I'm going to use this to tell to deselect this area inside. Doing this will keep me from having to edit that part later. I can just do my normal cleanup around the edges of the figure. There we go. Now I have my selection created. I can hit Command J and then drop out the background here. And you can see that the selection is made. It's just a little bit rough. There's a little bit of extra around everything. So cleaning that up is the next part. I'm going to leave this in the video, but I think I'm going to speed it up because this will take a little bit to get through. And it is the most tedious and meticulous part of this process. One thing I do like to do to make this a bit easier is throw in a solid color. Something that's a mid-tone so I can see both the dark and light areas that need to be affected. And that just really helps me see what is left over and what I can remove. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and make some of this happen. Alright, now we've gone through the process of essentially shaving this down, going in and removing the excess pixels so that we get a nice clean uh, blended line. I use a soft eraser at a very small size uh, to go in and remove that excess. Uh, now we have to deal with the hair, which is, as I mentioned before, a little more complex. The biggest thing about it is just ensuring 
that you don't get rid of the rather feathery the strands you want it to still have that feeling of being hair so a lot of times you have to I'm still using my regular brush right here just trying to give it the feeling of still having some strand effects to it uh, this part where the hair is really fine I'm not as worried it's when I get down here that we're gonna have to deal with more uh, special brushes or something like that to make sure we maintain the look of hair so as I come down to this point I'm going to remove the meat of this excess. Again, still just using a regular eraser. And I'm probably not going to get this perfect at this stage. I'm going to try and remove any larger block of white so that it more or less shows through. Oh, this is actually going pretty well with the regular brush right now. But if it starts to look unnatural, we can actually go in and take away a little bit or add a little bit using something. I actually have a brush that is for the purpose of hair. And using this little three-pronged brush, as an eraser, I can a little bit bigger than that. Give something kind of a, a feathered look of hair. Now let me use it uh, using the actual brush, and I'm actually going to copy some of this color and then just add a little bit of this in to increase the wispiness. Same thing up here at the top. Just adding a little bit in there so that I haven't removed too much and make sure this has kind of a, a natural look overall now this is a special brush that I downloaded you can find lots of them it is specifically for hair and that'll give me a much more natural look than I had before there's still a little bit of white in there that's going to come back to bite some but there's some adjustments we can make later during the process to help change that so now that I'm finished with uh, cutting my image out I'm gonna select it move it up to my other canvas and drop it down here in the corner and if I look at this one I think I need to make it just a little bit larger something like that move it over just a little and confirm now I scaled it up a little bit from when I brought it in you have to be careful with that if you take it too far you'll get pixelation when zoomed it at 100 percent but I barely did it so it shouldn't be an issue it shouldn't create any problems for me now that I've brought this figure in and I can see her over this darker background it is showing me that there's a couple of spots where I'd have to take an eraser and do just a little bit more cleanup uh, for example, along the legs here, I'm seeing just a little bit more. So, Whenever you bring something in and put it over its actual background, you usually do have to do a little bit more touch-up just to make sure everything's blending together. This is where a composite more or less falls on its face or works, is when you go in and check and make sure that the images actually do blend and again when I say blend I'm talking about using soft brushes even if they're really small soft brushes to make sure that everything fits together so a quick glance and you can see on the hair still having some issue that's where a lot of the white comes out but we'll be working on that specifically a little bit later so just a little bit more touch up here on the outside it's actually not that bad usually I would expect more I guess I did a better job during the process than I normally do now that's much better my figure is fitting very nicely over the background this little bit of highlight here I'm okay with because it looks like this the Sun is hitting the figure alright so now I have figure sky C now we need to bring in our boat we'll go ahead and do that 
Oh, actually, before we do it, let's go ahead and take our sunset, which you'll notice this looks like a huge mess right now, a huge color explosion. Uh, what we want to do is reduce the uh, saturation of some of these elements. The one that I'm really going to start with is uh, the sunset, which is the, probably the most intense thing. So I'm going to do image adjustment, as long as I had that selected in the layers palette, hue and saturation. And I'm going to drop that down to about minus 40. Go ahead and soften that up some. It's already easier on the eyes just from doing that. I don't want to lose all the color. I just don't want the color to be overpowering. Uh, next thing up, I'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to go back to my images over here on the side and I'm going to bring in this one that's called Ocean Spray. I brought this in for the specific purpose of creating a little bit more natural look inside next to this rock because if I take it away the water looks just a little bit too calm for me if I throw in a little bit of ocean spray like that that just gives it a little bit of character and this is a fairly easy one to blend simply because it's water over water so changing the color altering some value a little bit is really all we're going to need to do to get a good result so starting with uh, just a nice soft brush again after I rasterize I'm nearly forgetting to do that each time nice soft brush go ahead and take out some of these trouble areas blend this together and I'm actually going to do a little experiment here uh, that worked pretty well in order to get rid of some of that dark area, it just occurred to me I should set the blending mode of that layer to screen, which drops out all dark elements and only leaves the light ones, uh, giving me a really easy way to just kind of throw that over the top. I'm going to drop my opacity just a little bit so it's not so intense. There we go. I dropped it down to about 73, 75. And now I've got some ocean spray. Now I feel like I've dropped it too much, though. Let me bump that back up to 80. Look at my other one. Oh, I'm still not happy with it. This is the internal war of design. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna compromise on 90. Okay, so if I zoom in and look, this is already looking pretty crisp and pretty nice at 100%. I've got a lot of nice effect going on just even with putting these together as they are. If anything, I would say that my ocean here in the background is just a little bit pixelated. So if if I was putting this together publication, I'd probably find a higher res ver uh, image of the sea uh, to work with because I did have to enlarge this one quite a bit in order to make sure that it filled the entire canvas. So for future reference, always work with really, really high resolution images, the, the biggest you can find. Next thing up, let's go in and locate our, actually it's just easier for me to pull them from here, our ship. I'm going to bring in my ship, increase its size a little bit, and this one's complicated. This one's complicated for one thing because I'm not able to line up the horizons. These were taken from two different perspectives, so the horizon is at a different place. So what I'm going to do is just more or less fake it to be sure that it looks like it's floating on the water naturally even though the horizon is significantly lower. Let's see how I did it here. There we go. Oh, apparently that made it disappear. We'll try that again. Better. So move it up to about that point and I'm pretty happy with that. I'll confirm it. So now we've got this boat uh, floating in the background here and as you can imagine we're going to do quite a bit of cleanup on that to make sure that it uh, is nice and clean. The good thing is that it grants us a little bit of leeway and you'll see why as we get a little bit further in. So right now I'm just going to rasterize that layer and I'm going to go ahead and start erasing most of this extra around it. I'm going to be really careful not to erase any of the rigging, any of the cells at this point, so I don't mind that there's a big glow around the edges. I'm 
I'm just concerned with getting enough of this cleaned up so I can, I can more or less see what I'm looking at. Alright, if I really push in here, you can see it has some nice water effects that should blend in pretty well with what I have going already. Uh, I am going to want to try and trim it down a little bit more, but again, I don't want to get too harsh with it because a little bit later some glow coming from behind the ship can actually be really useful. Instead, I'll, I'll work a little bit up here on the front to get rid of that. You can see I'm using a pretty sizable brush. I'm trying not to worry too much about doing away with some of this. In this one, I could probably get away with some selection methods, such as the magic wand clicking in between this rigging, but it tends to give me just kind of these crusty artifacts, these leftover pieces, and I really don't want that. I need this to say, to stay soft looking, kind of floating in the distance. I don't mind softening up the edge of these just a little bit. That's okay, but I don't want to take it too far. I'm pretty happy with that for the time being. It's obviously still messy, uh, but it's going to get the job done for me. All right, next thing I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and adjustment. I'm going to drop the saturation on that ship. I think I did this a different way in the instructions that I hand out, but that's okay. I'm also going to duplicate this ship a couple of times so that I have three different copies of the same ship. Now this is kind of a trial and error thing that I figured out, and I'm going to pop all these in a folder while I'm talking about this, of trying different blending modes, uh, different opacities, and seeing what I got from it. So I'm going to put all three of these in this same image, in the same folder, sorry. And I'm going to change these blending modes. Let's change this one to overlay drop its opacity down some. Change this one to multiply, drop its opacity down oh, just a little bit. And the original one as well. And then the overall ship folder. Let's drop that down some. I just want some of that light to bleed through from the background. And I took it down entirely to black and white so that I could affect the color. Uh, that one I wanted pretty much total neutrality from so that I could make alterations to the color. All right, next thing up in this process, we're actually nearing the end of our first part here. I'm going to create a layer above the ship. I'm sorry, it's actually going to be behind the ship. And I'm going to name this Sunlight. And it's about to make a little bit more sense why I left this glow behind. I'm going to grab a soft paintbrush. get pretty good size from it. I'm going to look for the location where it seems logical that the sun would be. And I'm going to plant the sun there. I think it would actually be something like this. I'm trying to decide where I want the sun at. We'll go with it right there. Okay, so if that's the sun, I think I can use a really big brush to just bleed some light out here. And you notice that's going to start taking care of a lot of this glow behind the ship. Obviously, it's not going to stay this intense. In fact, I may just back it off a little bit right there. But you can see it's starting to make more logical sense as to why this light would be coming from behind the ship and why you'd have this glow around it. It's still going to take some work, and that's okay. But for the time being, I'm leaving that where it is. And let's look at one last thing before we finish up. And this is actually dealing with, as you can see in the sample image, uh, changing the color of the hair. And this is a fairly complicated process because it requires using one of Photoshop's most frustrating and difficult to use functions. I'm sure somebody would argue with me on that, but I've seen many, many students uh, struggle with the concept of quick mask mode. Underneath the color picker on the toolbar, I'm going to select this little button indent it. If I hover over it, you can see that it says quick mask mode. And it's going to get change my color automatically, usually, to black. I want it to have black selected. Then I'm going to use a soft brush of a small size, and this is very important, to start painting over. And you notice it's not painting black at all, it's painting red. 
and there is a reason for that. It's showing me what area I'm targeting with quick mass mode. So it's not actually painting anything. I'm just telling it what to notice. What I'm going to get from this is a soft feathered selection, which is important, so that it doesn't create any harsh edges or outlines. And I'm going to use that to target the hair and change its color. Now when I go back and after I've painted this in, hit the quick mask button again, you'll see that it creates a selection around it, but what it's actually done is select everything but that but the hair. That's what it does. So there's an easy fix for that. Select inverse. Now just the hair is selected. What I can do with this is throw on a human saturation layer and as long as I have that selected it will automatically mask to the area that I have just placed. So what I can now do is adjust the color of the hair to get it blonde and then desaturate it to lessen the intensity. I'm going to want to get it pretty neutral, pretty soft. In order to make absolutely sure, to make absolutely sure that it's going to blend well. Sorry, I was looking at it. I was I was thinking through. Uh, you notice there's a little band of red down here. I want to go ahead and that means that my selection didn't come far enough down. So since I turned this into a mask, what I'm going to do is use a white. As long as I have the mask selected, I can go in here and just paint in just a little bit more. In order to make sure that that is perfect all the way around. So this is the first half of our photo composite. We'll begin picking up with the second half a little bit later on.